showing up okay? We can see it and hear you. Excellent. So I think like my colleagues before me, I had a lot of similar questions about Open Alex data, and I've seen it grow quite a bit. I've been excited about it and potentially tapping into that large database of research. And so as someone who manages our RIM system, our research information management system, I was curious what benefit Open Alex could add to our system. So for our system, uh, the public version is Experts at Minnesota. We use the, the back end, the tool is Elsevier's Pure. And so we use Pure as our tool and we also use their profile refinement services. And what that essentially is, is one, it's a automatic harvest of publications from Scopus to our system, but also when someone starts, it connects not just, um, connects them to their, research at previous institutions. So if I had just started at the University of Minnesota and it would connect me in pure systems to work that I've done previously at other institutions. So it can kind of contract someone's research beyond just the current institution. So it does some linking there. Uh, the main data that we use for our system is Scopus data. Um, that is our main harvest, though, of course, people can go in and add or pull content from a number of different databases, unpaywall, web of science. There can be a manual creation of content in our system. Um, so there is more than just Scopus, though Scopus is that main data source with that automatic harvesting going on with the profile refinement services. They get a sense of how big uh, the experts of Minnesota or our peer system is. We have over 350,000 research outputs, over 100 or no, over 1,000 organizations. It's been running, I'm, I've only been here for a year, but I believe it's been running for about 10 years or so. So it has some historical uh, context and it's been being built up. So the approach that I took is I simply wanted to look at, well, if I look at the publications, the research outputs from Pure for five year period, and I do the same thing from Open Alex. What will I learn? What will I find out? Um, I use not the Open Alex API. I use their new interface and I did some searching and then I exported that data into Excel. I did exclude about roughly 3000 records from here that did not have DOIs just to make my life a bit easier. And I matched them among DOIs. So what I found is on first glance, this 558,000 does not include those 3,000 records without DOIs. But at first glance, it seemed like the records were pretty similar. Uh, same amount of numbers over a five-year period. As I merged them, though, that there was quite a bit that were unmatched by DOI. There was, as you can see in the my uh, excellent graphic there, um, but 33,000 did match up and the rest did not match up. So we ended up with about 74,000 combined records. With those unmatched records, I, I wanted to do a deep dive and kind of figure out why they weren't coming up. And so I did a random sample of uh, 40 outputs, 20 from that were coming in from Open Alex, but did not match in Pure, and 20 coming in from Pure, but did not match in Open Alex. And so the main reason I found for those Open Alex publications that were not in Pure was really due to contract limits. And what I mean by that is contract limits on our profile refinement service. So these could be outputs that were published by an adjunct, published by what I suspected was a student, published by a lecturer. And so while these individuals could have used our system to import that content, it wasn't being automatically harvested. And so it was in Scopus, it just wasn't being automatically harvested. And there was one, even one case of someone who had um, a faculty member who had left the University of Minnesota for a new position at another institution. And so their content that they published was still affiliated with the University of Minnesota because it was done while they were here. But after they left, we turned off that profile refinement service. That was the main thing I found. There was a few instances of content not being indexed in Scopus, about seven that I potentially tagged there. Mostly those were preprints. And for those preprints, the ended up 
article was in Scopus, there were a few instances where the metadata seemed to be incorrect. I think I found two where it looked incorrect in Open Alex, two incorrect in Scopus, and some cases in just using different publishing dates that I think wasn't really that significant. When I looked at those in Pure, I found it was really the biggest one, 13 instances, what I, I labeled as affiliation change, name matching. It was instances where people had um, were being pulled in by that profile refinement services and the affiliation on the document um, was not University of Minnesota. So it was work that they had done before they came to the University of Minnesota system. And that was the biggest case. So the kind of a benefit there of that profile refinement service that was not being captured by Open Alex. It's just not something that they're doing as far as I'm aware. And just like before, I think I found two cases, maybe incorrect metadata Open Alex, uh, one case of incorrect metadata in Scopus. Um, I think I found one instance that was not indexed Open Alex. So my expectations, it would kind of be indexing different things, but was not the case when I looked at it. And there were two odd instances where when I searched for the content directly in Open Alex's Open, Open Alex, um, I was finding it, and it was affiliated with the University of Minnesota, but not the University of Minnesota system. So I would suspect that would have been pulling in when I was searching for the University of Minnesota system. And so I'm not sure if it is an error on my part or if it's not being grouped together correctly. It's something not that I need to be exploring further, but that was only, I think, two instances there that was causing that. In talking about open access and what these two different data sets are showing us is that they use different classification systems. Peer uses open, closed, and determinate, and then open Alex, as people have talked about previously, they used closed, bronze, gold, green, and hybrid. So it wasn't quite a, a match, but looking at those 33,000 matched records, the OA status matched only 62% of the time. And of course, with the different classification systems, the biggest discrepancy was those that were classed as indeterminate, but Open Alex's uh, system had more detail and data about that status. So that was a refreshing. Um, besides the indeterminate, there was a few, I think maybe about 5% where they just disagreed on whether it was open or closed, but that was a pretty small grouping. As I looked at the Open Alex metadata, I appreciate it indicated when articles were retracted. And that is not something that our system currently tracks or has a built-in field about whether that content has been retracted. Of course, they both had um, instances like the retraction when that was posted in the journal, that was both being pulled in and harvested. But Open Alex had that added benefit of having for that original article, the thing, the content being retracted. And so if I was pulling or running a data report on our system, and I wasn't taking time to try to identify that additional subcontent of the retracted notes, and I was just looking at published journal articles, I would be missing whether those things were retracted or be including that in my data analysis. So I, I did appreciate Open Alex having that content. I was also curious about funding data, which uh, Pure has that as a new field that was recently added. And so, as you can see, in total, I found in my data set, there was about 20,000 records in my peer set that had funding data and about 18,000 records with funding data in Open Alex. And I wasn't able to do a, a deep dive to see how correctly that funding data was assigned or that level. But what I was able to do is, based on the number of records that had funding data, try to list how much funders were listed. And what I did find, and more is not necessarily better, but that for our data set for Pure, there was 180,000 funders listed and Open Alex had 53, which I think easier to understand is about an average of nine for the Pure data and about an average of three for the Open Alex data. And the last point of comparison I was curious about was sustainable development goals. And so research outputs can be classified among a range of, I believe, 18 different sustainable development goals. And 
comparing how that appeared in OpenAlex and how that appeared in Pure. And so you can see that OpenAlex was tagging more content with sustainable development goals in Pure by about 10,000 records. The tagging though was total number of tags was actually a bit closer. And so for whatever reason, our the system that has been built in Pure that tags that, they were doing a bit tagging outputs that were tagged with more outputs. Um, but while Open Alex was doing a little bit less tagging and tagging thing about one. So it's, I'm not saying either one was more correct or relevant or right. I was just kind of seeing what data existed among sustainable development goals in both systems. And so those are the different points I explored first. Um, seeing how open Alice can add to a research information management system. And I think there's a lot of potential there and a lot of things that probably could be improved on both sides. That's great, Andy. You were just at 45 seconds, so you wrap that up in good time. Um, so thanks everyone for the, the first round of presentations. I'm gonna stop the recording now so that we can have an open Q&A and then we will have a scheduled break. Um, the, the times are in the chat again, but um, huge round of applause and thank you to all the speakers so far.